Well, there you are, cut it short. And boxing term then he has to say, break, stand back and count to ten. So there we go now then, the sex defence of this man, arguably the most explosive fighter around in the country. Breathes a little bit of fire in the eyes there. Ice cold when he comes in there. Sometimes when he puts that face on like that, it's their central casting that set him up to star in a Bond film as the villain. Well, him and as you're saying, he had to shed a bit of weight before he fought Chris Eubank, but of course went the, the distance at uh, last November 92. And for this fight, he says he was in training when he was called two weeks ago. He was already he went on a run of six wins. And he says, I'm, I'm in good shape, probably better shape than last time. Well, whether he can keep that up, age 33, I don't know. He's, he's changed the tag from Puma now to Toro the Bull. Paraguay's got a, more than a dash of Indian blood in him. Obviously, Jim Ben would like to stop this fellow, to be the first to do it. Uh, just to annoy Chris Eubank, really, who couldn't stop him. Yeah, well, it's effective for Ben because he's on a hiding to nothing here. Uh, Jimenez uh, was in a very boring 12 rounder with Eubank. Uh, but it wasn't Jimenez's fault. I think it was uh, Eubank's refusal to get involved. I think tonight's action will be far more exciting down to the fact that Ben loves the business. And uh, Jimenez has a far better chance of putting up a show tonight. I think this will be a far better fight than uh, his previous visit over here. Certainly been in with plenty of hard nuts. Remember now the Paraguayan, the great Roberto Duran, who went to points distance with him. And then he lost to Paul Roll now, the hard man who fought Marvin Hagler and company. So he's won and lost the South American light heavyweight title, the weight above this. This is super middle. That's the 12 stone division. And it's the WBC version, which is generally credited as probably the best one you can win. Certainly Lennox Lewis has no argument with that. I've seen this referee work a bit before, Jim, but it uh, come to mind what fights he had with Goodsman from Argentina. So a minute to go in the opening round. Well, Ben having a good look in the first round, he's far more controlled in his last few performances. He still has the fire, still likes to see opponents on the floor. But his attitude is a little bit more controlled, which has made him a more complete fighter. Yeah, at 30 now, you know, obviously uh, considered a bit of a great divide, really, in ages for fighters at this way. But he's really got himself under Jimmy Tibbs now. He's learning to box a bit and fight hard when he has to. Always was a good boxer. He won the ABA Championship, more on boxing ability than punching. Bad defensive fighter, Jim, is he the challenger? He's, he doesn't get himself too involved unless he has to. That's why he's lasted so long. In force for this one. Second and of course, the mandatory stand. Round two. Which I'd like to see introduced in British boxing as well. Round two. quite know what uh, stand of opposition that Jimenez has been fighting in the last six fights that he's had. They're, they're relatively unknown to us anyway. And we found a few more fights than the, the American statistics and the announcer had. He, we got him as winning, uh, fighting 55 fights and not 53. <laughs> Different character, Ben, now, but what is hitting those fellas he called the Mexican road sweepers just getting rid of them as quick as he could that, that was a lovely right hand lead there from Ben landed bang on him and his head didn't really shake him too much uh, we see people in the fight game who just can't be stopped uh, this fellow might be one of those but I'm sure they Nigel Ben will have a good try at it
trying to counter punch a bit, isn't he, Jimenez? He's just waiting to see the way Ben comes in if he's dropping his hands. Well, already you can see that uh, Ben suits him far more than Eubank. Ben wants to get involved, so he's given Jimenez a, ch a chance to draw punches and try to counter. Jimenez is a decent performer. Just gets into the number 10 ranking, actually, in the WBC, but I don't always place a lot on that. It's who they've been fighting to get those ratings that I'm concerned about. He's certainly worth it in the top 10 because he's always, he's always campaigned in good company. Been 12 rounds five times, Jimenez, so he, he knows how to stay on. With a minute to go in the second. Ben just reaching a little bit with the right hand. We did. He's going to have to step a little, a couple of bit. Oh, good left foot. Well, that was better. Just step a little bit closer before he lets the punches go. Yeah, he just edged himself cleverly there for that. He'll be pleased with that punch, Ben. He's absolutely lethal when he's using the, the ropes to prop him up a bit and uses them almost as a catapult. Well, I think we've seen more excitement in the first couple of rounds in the saw and after 12 rounds that uh, Jimenez was here before. This is shaping up well. So the countdown then to the end of the round. Council Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And I'll tell you what, he's, he's still got plenty of strength going this fellow Jimenez. You know, he, he wasn't able to show it all the time with Eubank. He found him perhaps a little bit more difficult to catch. It's like that. He and also looks to have more appetite tonight, Red. Yeah, he does. He fancies this, doesn't he? Yeah, but as I say, being a more orthodox type of opponent suits him far better. Still working out of Ben's own corner there. A little bit more artful butchery about Ben's boxing, Jim, but uh, he's been caught quite a bit there, you know. Obviously, he's saying, well, if that's as hard as you can punch, won't you taste mine? Well, well, Ben's not bad when he's backed up to the ropes. He, his upper body movement's good. He can slip and uh, block a lot of the punches. He wasn't caught with too many clean shots. But for the second time uh, in the first uh, three rounds, he was put under pressure. He's just taking a little bit too long to get his punches off, Ben. I mean, he's right in punching range now. He's just taking too long to get them off. I know that the corner are all saying, you know, steady yourself, think what you're doing. Maybe he's just overdoing it a bit. I can understand that. Well, 12 rounds is a long time, and uh, he doesn't waste as many punches as, as he did in his early career. I'm training in Tenerife for this fight. Those looping punches from him and Edges, they, they look a bit dangerous. Yeah, and, and Nigel can be shaken, as we've seen in a few of his fights. Uh, even Galvano, who's not noted as a puncher, they shook him badly. So that, again, adds to the excitement when you're watching Nigel Ben. He is showing off with the left-hand punch now. Back to the amateur days, that one. Well, I still think that the jab, Reg, is the best punch in the book. Breaks opponents down, breaks their concentration. And his jab is sharp when he's been through it tonight. Always keeps the other fellow occupied, Jim, too, isn't it? while he's making up his mind what to do with the right hand. The jab working well here, Reg. Well, I wouldn't want the bookies odds of 11 to 2 outside of they had human as They must be a bit concerned now. He's a bit better than that, isn't he? And we're into the 
fourth round of this World Championship fight. And by Ben's standards, you could say it's a bit of a slower start than normal. Jimmy. I don't blame him taking his mind because at this level, you can never take too many chances. Yeah, but, but it's, uh, it's uh, Nigel Ben being punished for, the, for his own standards. Uh, if this was any other boxer, you'd be seeing a good steady start, a couple of rounds in the bag, everything going well. But because we're used to so much excitement from Ben, you want it all the time. You can't have everything, but we say he needs more control. Well, he's shown more control tonight. And there's plenty of time to go. <laughs> Referee's got, got himself out there in a hurry. You get tagged as he's pulling him apart. See, Ben's still backing him and his up, which is the most important thing. You don't want this little strong fellow coming at you. concentrate uh, Nigel there's a little bit of a disturbance at the back of the hall somewhere had it early on in the show with the uh, the pack and supporters being asked to calm down oh, good left hook leap from Ben there that was real good punch See, I think Ben's trying to draw leads at the moment uh, he's standing in front of him and he's just trying to draw the lead come back with counters Minute to go in this round. A lot of fainting and bobbing and weaving and uh, trying to draw each other here. Two old cagey pros they look like at this moment. Yeah, they are, aren't they? A lot of threatening and not too much punching. The period there looked like a couple of solicitors sparring, didn't they? The Ben's jab still working well when he lets it go. Jimenez has been telling us here all the time that he, he really fancied his chances with this one and uh, some of us were a bit doubtful whether he could really have been in that top condition. He was a bit overweight it seemed in his last fight but he, he got it off quite easily. Well when we saw him against Eubank he seemed to lose heart as the fight went on just got fed up. disturbance among the crowd there and the actual like, master ceremony is telling the McCracken supporters to calm it down immediately there's no bearing at all on this contest it's just ridiculous somebody's picked up the microphone now that's all we need now Well, the, the fourth round was a fairly quiet round uh, again with Ben standards, but I think it's time now to raise the pace, get himself a that bit is, more involved. That actually is Robert McCracken appealing to him, I think. It sounded like him anyway. Cracking supporters now will be calmed down. We hope with this silly disturbance at the back of all. It's unfair to us in a world championship fight. So it's become an, almost a rarity now, trouble in boxing actually, that uh, you know, stuff with the football grounds over the past. So, Now behave yourselves, or else otherwise you will see boxing stop the 
must be very unsettling, Reg, for the boxers. I mean, th th this is a strange atmosphere to the boxing, and, and I think the action over the last round or so has reflected that. I mean, it's difficult to concentrate on the job when this is going on. I mean, they would be aware of it, obviously, Jim, wouldn't they? I mean, they hear the noise. They may not be listening. Well, Reg, you can keep your concentration going. You don't hear voices. You hear a hum of the crowd. But when there's a fellow standing with a microphone, you can hear every word they're saying, and that's probably worse for Ben because he's, I don't know if him and Ed speaks English or not, so it's far worse for Ben. He hears what's going on and it's breaking his concentration. We've had a poor round from him in the fourth and he hasn't really got himself to grips in this round either. Well, Gary Newborn's been out there buzzing, finding out what's happening. Maybe at the end of the round I can call him in to give us a report on what has been happening there. I mean, there might actually be a case, Reg, to halt the action until they get the crowd back under control. Yeah, I think it's not fair to a defending champion. No, absolutely. I'd like to see that, though. And I hope the Board of Control will consider it. And it looks like the supervisor of the WBC is thinking about that. Hello? So here's Gary Newborn. Well, it's a promoter's nightmare, this. It's the one thing they've feared. It's been really on the edge of ten tension here all night. They've been fighting in the bars. Basically, it's to do with the British Light Middleweight Championship, Robert McCracken. Uh, some of his supporters here are fighting. They're Birmingham City supporters, actually, and they've been drunk for quite a few hours. There's a Birmingham City shirt there. And they're up against Steve Foster's supporters, some Manchester United supporters, and they threatened to call off the fight. And Mickey Dove, McCracken's manager got into the ring and said McCracken's career will be over if this goes on because no promoter will touch McCracken with a barge pole because of this and the thing about this is that it's they don't know what to do here it's distracting from the fight McCracken's brother was on the microphone Red said he didn't know it was appealing to the fans Reg well carrying on with the action and in round six and I thought the WBC supervisor had a word with the referee there not I've suspected that he was going to sort of not call the fight off, but take a rest period until everything calmed down, and it appears to be quietening down now. Well, that's, that's hopeful anyway. It's nothing to do at all with this contest. It's just ridiculous. Well, nobody likes trouble, Reg, but I think it's time now to let the stewards and the police handle it and leave the microphones alone and allow Nigel Benn to go on with his job. His whole future depends on tonight, and he's been shaking there with a left hook. This fellow is very dangerous when he comes forward. Ben's going to have to come back with something here. Yeah, he's getting stuck in the pit below the waist there. The referee's letting him get away with that, Ben. Now he's, he's got to get himself out of there, right above us. Ben was shaken by that first punch, Reg, and he's just getting his head back together again. Now he's got to come back with punches. Grab hold or come back with punches. I think maybe Jimenez has blown himself out just a little bit. Through a lot of punches there, not many get through. Uh, this Paraguayan Indian is really on the warpath, isn't he? He's, he's ignoring the noise that's been in the crowd. It's a long time since we've seen Ben under pressure like that, isn't it? Yeah, and I feel a lot of it has to do. He was getting his, his show on the road, he was getting himself under control, and then that, uh, the, the, the problems with the microphone, people screaming in his ear. It must have unsettled him, and I think it would unsettle Ben more so than him and him. But Ben hasn't really got this fellow under control yet, he hasn't stamped his authority on the fight yet. No, nope. he's not in professional terms, become the governor. Even as they're boxing now, there's very little atmosphere, even the crowd have been distracted. It's a terrible atmosphere, a little crash, clash of heads there, accidental. But this is a terrible atmosphere all the way around. Well, I mean, some of the ringsiders probably left their seats, certainly the ladies did, I didn't blame them. So there it is, then, the last half minute of this round. Now let's hope now that it's going to pick up for the second half of the fight now, Jim. See, Ben is not putting punches together the way you know that we know he can do. His jabs are all right, his left hook's half decent. 
but he's not letting clusters go, so he's not getting this fellow under control. Too many single punches from Ben. You can see now how he, you know, so confident in going the distance with everybody, Jimenez. The co-promoters are with me. Frank Warren, first of all, have you ever seen anything like this? I think it's disgraceful, Gary. I mean, these people, we don't need them in boxing. They're, I mean, they are genuinely football hooligans. I suppose they've been on the booze all day. And got it, but a lot of them seem to have rushed the door and got him without playing. Um, and, you know, we knew there may be a risk with this fight, but nobody expected this to happen. I certainly didn't think this would go on. And, I, you know, it's just so terrible eh? for the game, for boxing and for sport. And it's also bad for, you know, we've got American TV here. God knows what the people think back in America. What do they think, Don? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's the enthusiastic British fans that these are Vikings. It's worse, you know what I mean? It's really worse. And what they're doing is deplorable because you got, they're singing the Vikings song and everybody think about is Kirk Douglas, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Ernest oh, Borgnine jumping so into the pit. These guys are trying to exemplify that in real life, you know what I mean? And they're throwing things when there's no repeat, no return match. Well, we, can, we will consider whether the McCracken fight will go on. We can consider at the moment. So coming into round seven, and let's see the update on the on the bother. So now we're just getting a bit more enthusiastic cheering for this fight now. difficult man to fight against him as he really is a strong fellow absorbs a punch well and doesn't give him much play in the action there he backs off he comes forward he changes his style you can understand now why he goes the distance with so many good fighters including as i said roberto duran who eventually was past his best then he's a real good pro and that's why i think ben must try to back him up if a fellow is very physically strong, then you don't want him coming at you. You want to back him up if possible. Ben will have to let punches go in twos and threes and fours, not these single punches. See, when he, when he defeated Henry Wharton, Ben, he did quite a bit of boxing in that, but he, he opened up at the right times in that fight, didn't he? But it, I know we can't compare one opponent in style to the other, really. I think it's just that the lack of combination punches in his work tonight. Uh, I mean, we've always seen Ben like pot shotting with one single shot now and again, but his strength is awake and let punches go. I know this fellow is uh, difficult and he's dangerous, but he's going to have to let more punches go to get him under control. This is what he does there he goes. Yeah, there he goes again, taking a few liberties too, isn't he? Some of these are getting through this time, Reg. Yeah, Nigel grab and hold. Some of those punches were getting through. That was the difference with the earlier on slot from uh, him and Apparently the betting shops, you couldn't get a, a bet on Ben to win this fight. There was no, no odds available. I mean, that's how one-sided they thought it was. See, I think too many people have a, a, a poor opinion of Jimenez because of the boring show with Eubank. But you have to remember, different fighters make different fights, and this was always a far better match than the, the match with Eubank. Certainly it seems his attitude is that way anyway, Jimenez. Maybe he's already had some shots at the champion. This is his third shot, actually. Uh, so he figures, well, if that's going to be the last one, I better give it all I've got, and he is. Well, Coming up to the end of the round. He's had a few bits of success, so that's keeping his enthusiasm high. Well, all calm and collected there at that corner now. Let's, uh, wondering if there he is, Jimmy, too, for us say, OK, you're all right, you're doing OK, but you're taking a few too many punches. I wouldn't be surprised if you're not saying that. Let's have another look at it, Jim. Yeah, some untidy stuff from Ben. Uh, maybe, who knows, maybe just out of the ring a little bit longer. Uh, maybe not just as sharp as we expected to see him, but he was certainly getting caught with punches when he was under pressure here. I mean, there's four or five punches all getting home, and the only way Nigel can get himself out of trouble is to grab hold of the man. Oh, sorry. Right down again, 
concentration. He's got every right to be quite pleased in uh, him as his former there. They go the 12, and I think there's a distinct possibility at the moment. Judges are from Holland, Spain, and Germany, and the referee's Argentine doesn't vote. Let's have a look at uh, Barry McGuigan's unofficial scorecard there. Well, he's got, he's got it close enough, Jim. How do you see it? Yeah, maybe a little bit wider for, for Ben. Uh, Ben's certainly what was very good. He's had a couple of lazy rounds, but he's been under pressure a couple of times. Oh, good right hand. Now that is exactly what Ben needed. Yep, that's it. But look how the man took it. His eyes are as clear. No problems. Took a terrific punch. No problem. Legs still strong. Thick neck there, stuff on those shoulders. He does have a push and a punch there. That doesn't dishearten Ben, you know, he caught him one of his best shots and didn't get anything out of it, really. Better off than taking it, anyway. No, the, the fact that it had such a sudden impact on him, the, the man's recovery powers are, are first class, but you can see the effect the punch had as it landed. I think that's what Ben needed. Just a little bit of success, because he's been the one who's been under the pressure the two or three times. the eighth round, you know, it's almost as though the moves are choreographed for them at the moment, isn't it? It's not comparable to the, the mad flying machine who came down in the ring when we were in Las Vegas given for the Riddick Bow fight and Van der Holyfield, but even a break like that, I mean, I'm amazed the way they came back, and these fellows are now just really recovering from that. Yeah, well, that night they stopped the action, which was sensible. I think that's what they should have done here tonight. Maybe now Ben just get his mind back in the job because he is looking a little bit sharper now. Oh, these are good jabs again. That's what I think has been nicking the rounds for Ben. Although they've been, I've been criticising them for single punching, but the jab is piling up the, the points. And apart from a couple of rounds where he's been under pressure, I think really he's been keeping himself in front. pulling his head back but also going to get jabbed back there Jimenez and probably looks a better punch from the back of the hall and it does close in but there's still good scoring stuff the Ben's what is sharper since that good right hand landed so he's certainly done him, he's done himself a bit of good with that single punch he eats those left hands Jimenez He's not getting himself into range so easily now, him and he's been pushed back by that jab. This has been a good round for Nigel Ben. It's just as though he's got his mind back in the job again. I suppose, Barry McGuigan, this is why Nigel Ben is so exciting. That right hand may well change the course of this fight. Yeah, it, it was pretty close up until then, uh, and him and had two good rounds. He hurt him in the sixth round, and then Ben came back in that last round with a smashing right hand, straight right hand on his own. And here we have a look at it. Just watch this right hand. Bang, it straight over. Full over. Now look, he hit him on the side, and his legs shook completely. And he should be putting a one-two after that. Just a, a straight one-two is, is the punches that will take, rid of, uh, take care of this guy. But him and his is so tough and so strong, he'll be hanging in there. And the, the thing about him is he recovers so quickly. So it's going to be an interesting fight over the next couple of rounds. They're excited in this uh, in, in Paraguayan corner. They think he's got a chance of winning this one. So there it is then. I wonder how the judges have got this one, Jim. I'm trying to read what the judges have got, and it's very difficult. We know how we have. We have been ahead, but there's not much in it. No, I mean, he's certainly keeping it close, but I just feel that uh, not enough punches getting through. He's had been under pressure a couple of times where he's really looked in charge, but it hasn't lasted long. And that was a good round for Ben. I think Jimenez now has to raise the pace to get himself back into this. And another look at the unofficial scorecard there. Now he stretched that uh, lead a bit since we last saw it there. That's well, probably about right, Jim. A couple of points, eh? Yep, yep, there's not too much in it. Hey, get him, hey, get him. 
as we always say, I'm very subjective to scoring the boxing in a contest of this style. There's a lot of artful stuff going on, a bit of a chess match at times. And we're into the ninth round now, a minute gone. Scheduled, of course, for 12 World Championships. Grab that ball. So those days have gone to the middleweight days before Ben went up to super middleweight so now when he had, the, what was it, 13 first round wins, 18 in the second round and 16 second timing. Now, you know, there's nothing easy at the top in this business. If somebody's in the top rankings, it's usually a tough fight. Ben hasn't quite picked up where he left off in the previous round and he's still marching forward there, thankfully. But not having the same impact on him and his. Two fights of Oro Galvano, Ben, Nigel Piper, Lugen, Chris Eubank, Draw, Henry Wharton. But three of the last four, Jim, have gone the distance with Ben. Yeah, well, keep in mind, Reg, that the opposition hasn't been too bad. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And that's where you have to give Ben credit. He is prepared to fight whoever it is about. Oh, and again, yeah. a real tough man facing him tonight. It's quite a jackpot going for him with the support then now of Don King with the tie up with Frank Warren and their long term for him. Frank Lyles is a champion now. You can easily do a unification match with him. See, this all adds extra strain to a fighter, knowing that everything hinges on your whole future, making so much money, and, and uh, the fight's still to come, and then there's a change of opponent that kicks everything up in the air. Pick up a couple of words or so, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he seems to have that back, and thankfully he's not allowing Jimenez to do too much. I mean, that wasn't a great round for Ben. He didn't allow Jimenez to do too much, so allows him to nick the round. Late round out the corner there, the Paraguayans. Tenth round. And you might say a bit unusual in a Ben fight to go this far. Either way, there hasn't been a lockdown. Ben clutching oh. on here. Well, he seemed to well, catch him high in the head. About knockdowns, uh, timekeeper took up the count, but the referee didn't give him this mandatory eight. No, it just certainly, a was, certainly was a push-up. A, a punch landed it just in the body. before that. Yeah. Yeah. He lunged with a body shot, which caught Ben, then he, he, he caught him high in the head and pushed him to the floor, so it wasn't a knockdown. But the trouble is, Ben, under pressure again. We don't see him having him and his under this kind of pressure. Ben looking a little bit weary just at this point. He's always said he'd never underrated this uh, Paraguayan, you know, at all. He's, you know, when other people were writing him off, uh, Ben kept saying, hey, this, this is a tough guy, you know. Not only on the Eubank fight, he was judging him on others. Yeah, still punching on the referee get there. I wish he'd shout break a bit louder. Maybe they could understand that easy. Keep going and stop. <laughs> so 
See, moving up to weight, Jim, somebody will probably claim that, well, maybe he doesn't carry the, the punch power with it then. Yeah, well, I, I suppose you do have to expect that to a certain extent. Minute to go on the track. Oh, just crashed past you, Jim. It, it almost ignores that thing, my nose, Jim. See, most of the, the men that Ben has been boxing are also middleweights who have moved up. And it's not as though he's moved into a completely new division in the 12 stone division. So, I mean, I think his punches still have the same effect, all right. If he gets them home, he still ca carries that power. It's just his timing doesn't seem perfect tonight. And he's not letting the punches flow. Get as they, as they say in the boxing business, banged up a lot in fights actually. Ben, he's often riding punches. Jim, here's this knockdown or a push down or whatever. The, the body punch comes in, I think. Yeah, he seemed to lunge forward with a, with a body shot. There it is. There we go, yep. But Ben looked all right. In a little bit of trouble here, just a bit messy now. And he was pushed to the floor. Definitely not a knockdown. Well, the referee agreed with you. A glancing right hand here from Ben C. He just needs his timing just a little bit better. Just to land that much cleaner. Good job. Just to, just to land him that little bit cleaner. Eleventh round now. Round eleven. I hope we're not going to get another cliffhanger here with the judges. See, there's a bigger lead there on the unofficial one from Barry McGuigan. See, I think the main thing for Ben Reg, even when he's had rounds that have not been so good, he hasn't really allowed Jimenez to do a lot of work. I mean, he doesn't need this right now. Good, uh, two lovely punches, but Jimenez just smiles back at him. This fellow really is as tough as I've seen. Smiles and snarls at the same time, doesn't he? See, apart from a couple of seconds when he's under pressure, Ben usually manages uh, to keep him out of harm's way, just keep him at arm's length, not allowing him to be effective. And I think that's what's uh, keeping the, the close rounds his way. He's almost welcome, Jim, he's almost welcome there on the ropes there, Ben. I'm, I'm not sure I'd be in love with that tactic, this. No, this is what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to, to volunteer to, to be under pressure. He's got to fight his way off those ropes. Sometimes that comes into sparring a lot, Jim, with the, the sparring partners, and you sort of, you're just getting a bit fit, and you don't mind them coming at you on the ropes, and you haven't got out of the habit enough yet, Ben. Well, a couple of times in, in Ben's fights, 12-round uh, fights, the last couple of rounds, he's been a little bit lazy. I think against Eubank, uh, that the return of Eubank, you thought he had the fight in the bag, and he come off the table, and he can't afford to do that. Now, I don't know if he, if he feels he's done enough to win or if there's a slight lack in stamina. I don't know quite what it is. But, I mean, his work rate has certainly dropped uh, in the 11th round here. And when he was fighting more regularly, of course, he's punching. You know, he's a lot sharper than this. Maybe being out since last February has been a problem. As you say, Jim, you know, we're criticising by the, by his own standards, really, aren't we? He's still doing enough for us to be winning the fight. Yeah, and he's facing a man who, never mind be knocked out, he just doesn't go on the floor. I mean, this fellow probably is the, the toughest man in boxing. And he's taken some real full-blooded shots from Ben, and uh, just smiles back.
Ben's jab has always been good. I just wish it, it would work off it a bit more often and follow through with some uh, crosses and hooks afterwards. Coming up to the end of 11. What was he gesturing at the referee there for, Jim? You know? Well, I think him and his uh, couple of little taps just after the bell. Oh, I see. I they, they weren't that. dangerous punches, just little taps, I think. which was just uh, having a word. Well, good. I'm seeing things have calmed down now. That's one good thing with the crowd. Now, watch for the rush. Yeah. Watch for the rush now, this last round. Give him a some proper water, right? Well, watch it. When he rushes across that ring, you've got it all in the inside. Yeah. Good, Jim. Just reminding the corner that uh, it's the last round and to get the box and just touch gloves. And just again, and that was a lovely the way he can punch him off the ropes. That's what he wants to do, is punch him off the ropes. much of a touch of gloves the Hitchup. Jimenez wanted to get straight down to work. But there, there again, he's, he's got it fairly clear now, Barry McGuigan. We'll see how that compares with the, the judges' cards. <laughs> Certainly Jimenez has thrown a lot more punches in this fight than he even dared to try against Eubank. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, he seemed to get fed up as the Eubank fight went along, and uh, maybe he wasn't the only one that night. But uh, here he's had a little bit of success. Ben has always been in punching range. It's been a good little battle. Uh, not too much real high drama, no knock the ball. A knockdown, but uh, no, no serious knockdowns. But uh, he's fancied the job a lot more. Oh, the wind with the punch there. Ben's feeling a little bit weary again, Reg, and that seems to have been a problem in uh, some of his recent fights. Just the last couple of rounds of a 12 rounder. He's a little bit tired. Well, I think the Paraguayan Hartley Indian is going to do a bit of a war dance at the end of this round, Jim, thinking he's won it. But certainly not an our car, but it's it's not been a totally convincing display by Ben, or has he still got time? No, I don't think uh, Jimenez has done enough to win anything here. He's won a couple of rounds, he's kept it interesting all the way through. I always feel Ben's jab and there's a couple of big rounds that he's produced. Even now, he's not allowing him in his post. Bang, uh, bang, four jabs. Scored without reply there. Not using the ropes to his advantage at all there, but he's better off in the centre of the ring. Now he is. This is when he gets tagged against El Govano just at the dying seconds. He doesn't want his concentration to drop. The fight's never over till the final bell. So we're into the last 10 seconds now. I just watched the jubilation in Jimenez's corner there. Well, they are all old mates again now. Nice friendly touch at the finish. No, he's behaved quite well there, Jimenez. I thought he might do a bit of a dance and say, have I won it or not? He must be quite pleased actually with, it, with his performance. I'm, I'm not sure whether Ben will be. So now the usual long wait and the, the old sweaty palms around all the friends and supporters of Ben. Just to make sure their man uh, is getting a verdict. We, we certainly had a share of debatable ones around the world of boxing at this, at this time. Great break! Well, great uh, break! I don't know 
what's going through his mind now, Jim? Could you read that at all, Ben? How do you uh, fellas feel at the end of that? Well, he must feel he's done enough. Fred. You can see the look in his face. He's not been banged up at all. A couple of times he was caught under pressure, which you expect. But no, I think he must feel uh, fairly confident that uh, he still holds the title. Uh, the whole thing is still rolling along nicely. <laughs> to ringside immediately. Chris Roberts to ringside immediately. Please. Supervisor from Switzerland, Peter Stuckey. He has to check the cards and uh, assisted by the Boxing Board of Control. And it's, uh, well, it's all calm. There's almost an armistice there, isn't it? The audience at last. Well, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, here are the score totals. Judge Greenside, Hank Adrian scores the match 117-112. Jose Larrasco Carrasco scores the match 119-115. Kirk Stromer scores the match 118-112. to All three in favor of the winner unanimously. And still champion. Yeah, it's a unanimous decision, and Jim, quite a wide one, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they just really felt Reggie He kept himself in front. I don't feel he allowed him and his to do much work, even in the, the tour round.